leave before heading inside. And this jacket's cool. Since you're a grown up now, I won't cover for you this time. Hello Pookies, welcome back. Love and deep space yet again, yes. We are on chapter four now. So I'm not gonna hold you for too much longer. Let's just, let's get into it, shall we? So as you can see, the new story got unlocked. That's how long it's been since I've played this. Um, I've been busy, okay? Uni, uni is making me crash out. Episode four, chapter four, sorry. Let's go, family. Grandma, I'm home. Ah, oh, sweetie. I remember this chapter now. <laughs> Interesting. You haven't been visiting often since you became a hunter. Did you miss me? Yes, Graham. Of course. Oh, something smells good. Is it roast pork? Oh, I've learned how to cook a new dish. Would you like to try it? What happened to the pipsqueak who wouldn't even pour me a glass of water? Work has changed you. I should have talked you into becoming a hunter sooner. Caleb? I thought I wouldn't see you until tomorrow at least. What's wrong with coming home early to spend some time with you and Gran? Wash your hands. Let's eat. How's your health, Grandma? Still getting headaches? She's so cute. Oh, it's normal for people at my age to get them. I'm already used to it. I'll be fine, as long as I take my medication. But didn't the doctor say you should be hospitalized for observation? Are you sure the meds will be enough? Oh, I just got out of the hospital. Shut up. Old, there's something. Old people make me so sad. It's a weak spot. I just, I feel so bad and I just, I want to cry whenever they're sad. Have you seen those like videos where it's like, uh, like an old person sitting in a restaurant and then they'll be celebrating their birthday alone and then people will start singing happy birthday and then they'll cry. Those videos get me every time, I swear to God. I'm like, I don't want to be that lonely when I'm old. It's too crowded and noisy and that won't help with my migraines. Already a worry wart? I can rely on me to handle the family stuff. I've submitted an application form for a long-term care ward. It's safe, quiet, everything's been taken care of. Wait, when His did this happen? And why didn't you tell me? <laughs> oh, Caleb, a decisive man as always. I didn't know about this either. If I need to stay in a hospital, you should visit me, all right? You can talk with Zane, have lunch with him too, perhaps. Well, he's really busy, so... Even the world's busiest guy has to eat. I haven't seen him in a long time. We should invite him over for dinner, right? And we can kidnap him if he refuses. Here's a message from... There have been many explosions recently throughout Lincoln City. The Hunters Association has concluded these incidents are connected to wanderers. So far, 22 have been wounded. With no casualties, we advise all citizens to be careful when outside. Explosions, huh? Hey, Pipsqueak, news, have there been a lot of active wanderers lately? From the world Evol kind of, Evol but it's fine. Lincoln has us. The deep space hunters of today know what they're doing. Well, even <laughs> so, you shouldn't push yourself too hard, my dear. And be sure to be careful during your missions. I know. But I'll be fine, Grandma. My evil works well against wanderers. Besides, missions are often done in pairs. If... If we get hurt, we have backup. Even if that's true, your safety is always the number one priority in whatever mission you take. Your evil is great, I'm not arguing that, but who's to say it'll protect you all the time? I really didn't like him at first, but he's growing on me. I don't know. Wanderers in the neighborhood? I don't know, he's growing on me. check it out. Maybe I'm in a good mood today. Grandma, Caleb, something's going on outside. I'm gonna take a look. Be back soon, promise. Hey, wait up. I'm coming with you. If you insist. No, I wasn't... I know he's gonna be the fifth love interest. I wasn't supposed to like him. I can't... No. 
No, it's fine. No, it's fine. I'm not concerned that he's going to be my favourite. I'm concerned that I'm going to like him and actually want to spend money on his cards. That's what I'm concerned about. Caleb, what kind of hunter lets their childhood friend tag along to work with them? I'm not tagging along with you, Pipsqueak. Just heading to the store for some vinegar and whatnot. All right, then. Well, we're just about to turn the corner. Go to the store and pick up your vinegar. Oh, and another thing. Better not walk out and start following me when my back is turned. Yeah, yeah, secret mission, blah, blah, blah. Can't let unauthorized personnel in on the details. Hurry up and go already. Also, I want some snacks. And fruit. Take all the time you need. <laughs> I, I feel don't like sense any fluctuations. I feel like because he's a childhood friend, I really like seeing the MC interact with him because it's really like bringing out her playful side, her like snappy, sassy side. I don't know, I, I really like their interactions actually. Why? Uh, at first I was like, ugh. Ugh, he's annoying. I don't know. Why do I like him now? <laughs> what happened? Oh, I always start out disliking the ones that I end up liking. I'll just walk around for a bit. I continue my search along the block. My hunter's watch doesn't react to anything, but I sense fluctuations in the air. They're bouncing around. Is the fluctuation source moving? Across the street, a man wearing a cap pops out of an alley. He turns slightly to the hovering patrol drone with compound eyes and fiddles with his hat. He's hiding something. Like sparks igniting a fire, the man's suspicious actions put me on high alert. As he moves, my, the watch on my wrist vibrates, showing metaflux in the area is increasing. He's the source? I cross the street and begin following the suspicious man from a safe distance. He seems to have noticed me. He's walking faster. It's definitely him. I have to stop him. I walk faster, ready to send my coordinates to HQ with my hunter's watch. My right arm feels an intense pain all of a sudden, like it's been stabbed with a blade. A weapon? No, it's evil. I see you're actually smart. Too bad. I don't have time to play around. Was that sexist? Did you assume that because we were a woman? You deserve everything bad coming to you. The man's cold gaze scrutinizes me. He sounds way older than he looks. I hesitate. The figure rushes into an alley. I run after him, but he's already gone. I can't sense even a single fluctuation. Was he carrying a protocol? Or could he have been the source himself? Why are you staring off into space? Mission's over. Look, we run into some problems. The sound of footsteps stops next to me. I come to my senses. Caleb? Whoa. <laughs> Still concerned about what happened earlier. I don't know if I should tell him. Should I? I should keep it a secret for now. Otherwise, Grandma and Caleb will worry. Let's go back home and eat dinner first. I've made my choice, but when our gazes meet, my reluctance turns into guilt. <laughs> Did you find any big bad wanderers? Found uh, something. The fluctuations disappeared. Probably a false alarm. You're a liar. A false alarm. And he knows it. Uh, Caleb, what are you- If it really was, then what's this? Oh, uh, I was petting a cat you got and- got scratched by another excuse. stray cat, huh? I think maybe I should go find that cat so I can avenge you. Caleb, don't. Come on. Grandma's waiting for us back at home. He just walked off snoodily. For any new watchers out there, at home, well, you're in for a ride. 
Caleb, I was telling the truth. It was just an accident. You and Grandma have enough to deal with. I understand you want to hide it from Gran. We've caused her enough trouble since she brought us up together. Now that she's older, it wouldn't be a good idea to make her anxious. But why do you have to hide it from me? Can't you trust me now that we're all grown up? Ow, why does this hurt? Why am I attached to him this time? What is happening? Why do I feel bad? At first I was like, shut up, man. Shut up, it's not that deep. I'm trying to do my job and now I'm like, damn, why I feel bad? Bro, she's trying to help us. It's fun. I don't want you worrying about me. It's not often you get to come home these days. So ruining the mood is the last thing I want to do. Oh yeah, because he works in the um, deep space tunnel, doesn't he? Also, I'm a grown up now. I need to be the one making sure I stay safe. You can't protect me forever. You can try. Why is that a problem? If not me, who could you possibly turn to? If What's wrong? You wouldn't understand even if I told you, Pipsqueak. Ow! <laughs> We've been outside for too long. Grand's Shut gonna be up! Worried. Shut up! I feel bad. You're doing it again. Go inside by yourself. I'm not your sidekick. Fine. But uh, hide the blood. Anyway. What a great chapter! <laughs> Now I like him! Fuck! Leave before heading inside. And this jacket's cool. Since you're a grown-up now, I won't cover for you this time. <sighs> the shock that I felt the first time this happened, the first time I watched this happen... <sighs> immense. <sighs> No longer a cutesy little game. This is actual trauma. This is actually just a repeat of her childhood trauma. That is horrendous. And Grimes died. And I didn't say Caleb died because I know he's going to be the next love interest. Um, because his text messages never go away in our phone. And I feel like the game wouldn't set that up if he wasn't going to be the next love interest, you know? It's just the fact that if he is still alive, he literally, the whole place is burning and he decided to take that necklace off and just like put it in front of us, put it in front of the MC for her to see. Bro is trying to start trauma. You know what? Maybe I don't like him. That's a red flag. Faking your death is a red flag, actually. Survey results. Two death. No evidence of human triggered detonation detected. No remains of any detonation device found. The deceased were not known to have any disputes or financial conflicts of interest with any other. According to the evidence gathered, this was an accident caused by Metaflux fluctuation. After an injection of protocor energy, the success rate of clinical treatments dramatically improves. In other news, in recent months, the number of wanderers in Lincoln has increased due to the fluctuations of Metaflux. Metaflux-related explosions have currently left 35 people wounded with two casualties in Bloomshore District. We advise all citizens to be careful. Uh, what are you doing here? I thought you were out on a mission again. So there were more random explosions. Yeah, I'll clock out soon. It's I peculiar. just finished reading these reports. I'll turn them in in a second. You're working so hard. Handling all these missions and investigating Metaflux incidents? I refuse to believe what happened to me was just an accident. I'm worried about you. How about... We grab something to eat. My treat. Captain! I'll send you the report soon. Thank you. I just got one about a protocor analysis. 
Who sent it? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. That was me. <laughs> you okay? Uh, I bet you haven't gotten enough sleep. We need a nap. Rest. And don't be too hard on yourself. Thank you, Tara. My pookie. The love of my life. I'm fine, Tara. Besides, I wouldn't dare fall asleep when... Hi there. Just calling to remind you, you have an appointment today. Dr. Grayson? You had a transapical metaflux ablation last month, right? Dr. Zane has your medical report, but you'll need to get an evolved cardiac examination first. Okay. I'm gonna pretend like I knew Zane. what that meant. He'll be worried if I don't go. Captain. Take care of your health first. Then, you'll have the energy to do other things. I don't know if it's like... The way she said that. Take care of your health first. I feel guilty. She... I felt like she was blaming me. It's not my fault. It's not my fault my whole family died. Ha! <laughs> this whole chapter is... These Story are the results things. of your medical examination. Everything is ready for you. You can visit your doctor now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello. Um, my doctor is Dr. Zane. Is he available right now? Follow me. Because of the recent wanderer attacks, Dr. Zane has been working overtime. Emergency operation in OR3. Call Grayson, stat. On it. Patient is elderly male. Prepare the pump for cardiopulmonary bypass. Ow, why did that hurt? Yes, I know he's course. doing his job, but like, not even a smile. Oh, I'm sorry. He's just very busy right now. Can you wait here for a bit if you're not- Why was that also hot though? <laughs> he acted so professional. There's just something about men doing their jobs right and professionally that just it gets to me it really gets to me it's fine the operation is more important thank you leading expert in the study of protocol syndrome appointed chief surgeon zane must be working overtime right now because more wanderers are attacking people. Let's take a nap on the uncomfortable hospital chairs because for some reason at every hospital they decide that making the chairs as uncomfortable as possible is the way to go. Even in hospital room. Why you ask? That is such a good question. It's to match the emotional trauma with the physical trauma I guess. We over. Do you want to get some hot pot? Oh can't. I promised my granny we'd have dinner together later. It's a sore spot. <sighs> Grandma. She did. Grandma. Caleb. If only we could have dinner together like before. <sighs> Damn. This is rough. This ep this chapter is good. Why the long face, Pip Squeak? I'm Flashback. just going to Aerospace Academy. Shouldn't you be happy? But it's all the way in Sky Haven. What if I suddenly crave your braised chicken wings? Oh, don't be too sad. He'll be back for the holidays. And when he is, I'll make him cook for you every day. So he's a pilot. And he can cook. What happened to me? Uh... Which means there's a reward for being your free personal chef. What is it? A send-off gift? Who says Don't I got think you? I haven't noticed you being all sneaky these past few days. I know what you've been doing. Caleb, that's 
cheating. Telekinesis. You can't just about use that. your evil to take it. <laughs> I knew it'd be in a style you really like. Won't you put it on for me? No way. Don't you have hands? <laughs> no, I don't. Hurry, the train is about to leave. <laughs> no, I might love him. No, I might love him. <laughs> oh no, I might love him. Okay, it's fine. If I see it's not with you next time, you'll be sorry. This is awkward. <sighs> Grandma. Caleb. I'm in... Zane's office? O to be the MC. Sorry, Zane. I must have fallen asleep while waiting for you. You do realize it is 11 p.m., right? I had to move you because you wouldn't wake up after three attempts. I've been busy with missions. Sorry! <laughs> I do believe that there is a follow-up plan listed on your discharge summary. I suppose you didn't notice. Don't be a dick! <laughs> I... No, he's guilt tripping me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should be nicer. My grandpa, uh, my grandpa, my grandma and my childhood best friend just died. Be a little bit nicer. Yeah, I'm fine. Fuck you. I'm fine. My health is better than before. You should tell your doctor the truth. When was the last time you slept? I don't know, my doctor's not being very well, nice. I've had some trouble sleeping. Visit the neurology and sleep center before you leave. It can help. Here's your medical report. Oh, I don't know. I really don't feel like feeling like a burden and he just made me feel like the heaviest burden. He made me feel like I just dumped seagull feces onto his desk and then ran away. After the explosion, your cardiac function index significantly increased. It's most likely a result of the metaflux. At least three months of rest and observation are required, but your circumstances call for me to make an exception. Seeing your current state, I regret discharging you early. I just want to know why the explosion had to happen. Take it. <laughs> what is this? Your grandmother asked that I give it to you. However, whether or not now is a good time. In any case, perhaps this has the answer. you I can't remember what's see. in this. Oh, we're opening it now. All right. Oh, it's a letter. A letter? What else did Grandma say when she left the box with you? Just to give it to you. You lied. Now he you lied. Have everything he you hesitated. Need. Go home and rest. Doctor's orders. Wait. Something's not right. Yeah. You're imagining things. Off you go now. He did not just gaslight us. That is a red... Zane, I thought that I would never say this, but that's a red flag. That is a red flag and I've spotted it. There's no way that you just gaslighted me. Never mind. I'll see you off myself. Wait for me outside. Oh. Out of field already being formed. Incredible timing. Wonderful. This wanderer is stronger than the ones I've faced before. Sorry, can't follow doctor's orders right now. Yeah, good job, dude. Let's just focus on the situation at hand. I'm getting my three stars! And I'm also playing them just in case anyone watching is new and then doesn't know how to play. And what's a walkthrough? Concentrate. Make sure what to dodge I? the attack. It's your turn. No problem. 
Okay, we're going to Watch out. I'm okay. Let's take it down first. It's your turn. No problem. Now's our chance. I'll show you. Keep your distance, or else you'll get hurt with cover. Be careful. Victory is within reach. It's your turn. No problem. Same. Here it comes. Leave it to me. Oh, what is this what you want? Perfect. Watch where it's going. Watch out. I'm okay. Let's take it down first. Seize this chance. It's your turn. No it problem. Let's no. do this together. Okay. It is falling. Oh, nice teamwork. Slay. Ah. Brilliant stuff. Last part, let's go. Is Oxo Hospital's flux stabilizer broken or something? How did a wanderer manage to get in? Uh, your oh, hand. not having a good time. Your evil is... Do you need help? Keep your distance. Zane, you... That would suck. Frostbite hurts. Not that I know, but like, brain freeze is probably the same feeling. <laughs> you need a doctor. You seem like you also need a doctor, huh? Bro's just gonna gaslight I again. So a gaslight us again. Still, if what this do you is a super that? important thing, why didn't Grandma give it to me sooner? I guess I'll never be able to ask her now. I'm going home. You don't need to come with me. I want to be alone for a while. Diseases and accidents are inevitable. Some leave this world whether they want to or not. <sighs> don't stay trapped in the same place. Wait, are you trying to make me feel better? If it comforts you, even for a moment, then yes, I am. Okay, you're back on my good list. Why are we back? What? Oh. Uh. <laughs> Your condition is serious. No more delaying treatment. Oh, the time has come. We branch it off. The heavens have been more than kind to someone like me. No, Graham, Graham. Do you remember what you promised us? Well, if the worst case scenario happens, please take care of her on my behalf. You know. By helping her, you help yourself. Was that me, Grams? Why is everyone keeping the MC in the dark? Just tell her. She's an adult. You can tell her the truth. I'd be so annoyed if I was her. Even so. It shouldn't have come to this. I know he has the angstiest storyline. I know Zane Girlies, I'm so sorry. I know that your storyline is gonna be so depressing. I just know it in my heart. I know he has a sad backstory. <laughs> like the other ones are like, I don't know, you can feel like a little bit of angst. But like Zane's is like, damn, that's rough. <laughs> We'll just go for chapter five as well.
I press my thumb down on the lock and grandma's box opens with a light mechanical click. The lamp on the desk shines over yellow papers. The one at the top of the pile appears to contain an exper experimental data with diagrams. Observation log. The subject's heart has been stable for the past 72 hours. Preliminary assessments indicate fusion with the Athercore was successful. Well, we know if we're talking about hearts, we're talking about us. AC fluctuation test number one. The energy fluctuation value of the Athercore has reached level two. The subject's heart is stable. So they were doing experiments on us, is what I'm gathering. AC fluctuation test number two. The energy fluctuation value of the Athercore has reached level three. The subject's heart is stable. Fusing a protocol with a human heart? Why did grandma have records about an illegal experiment like this? Well, think about it for a second. It's also the first time I've heard of a protocol called an Athercore. Could it be related to the one the association is looking for? I jot down the name of the special protocol and continue to read the files. The next few sheets report similar data. The last sheet, however, is handwritten instead of typed. AC fluctuation test number 12. The energy fluctuation value of the Athercore has reached level... Don't know Roman numerals. The subject is showing abnormal signs. Warning! Stop it! Wait, sorry. So this, this one's handwritten. You're telling me that someone wrote warning stop it? <laughs> what? Imagine things going downhill and you're just like, wait, no, 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 no. I just got to write warning stop it on, on the sheet. That's crazy. They literally wrote warning stop it. Dot, 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 explanation, explanation, explanation. <laughs> Damn. They really wanted to put the suspense in it. The messy red handwriting ends with three startling explanation marks. This looks like grandma's handwriting. She could have added a little more context. As I read the documents, a feeling of dread fills the room. Gender, female, age seven to eight, evil, unhasen class, yep. There's no name in the subject information category, but there's enough to make an educated guess. An ahos, uh, hos, an ahos and class evil. Could this test subject be you? Maybe, maybe. Questions and answers interlock like chains in my mind. The sweet grandma I knew has revealed a side of her I didn't know she had. Could the test subject in these records be me? Yes, spooky. As the initial. Sh as the initial shock subsides, I hesitate for a moment, then pick up the phone to call the only person who might have an answer. Did something happen? Yes. Zane! I need to ask you a question. Sensing the urgency in my voice, Zane's voice also becomes serious. I'm listening. When is he not serious? It's about my heart. Is the protocol fragment in it the same as the ones in the protocol syndrome patients? <sighs> I just went through the stuff grandma left me. The voice on the other end of the phone is silent. Zane seems to be thinking about how to respond. It certainly is a strange protocol fragment. After reviewing your condition, I've tried to find similar cases. But as far as I'm aware, you are the only one. Is that because of the Athercore? <sighs> You're my primary care physician. Grandma also entrusted you to give me these papers. She must have a good reason. It's only been six months since she passed. It's been six months? Regardless. Aside from its name, I don't know much about it. I suppose we were moving on pretty quickly. Six months would make sense. The fragment in your heart has been there for a long time. Perhaps there's someone who can provide us with information. Do you remember Dr. Noah? No. 
The person Zane is talking about was the previous chief medical officer of ASCO Hospital. Ah, so. He's an old acquaintance of Grandma and Zane's teacher. He is also the first doctor to treat my heart disease. If anyone knows something about the files Grandma left, it's him. Dr. Noah is currently doing a personal research project in Snowcrest. If you want to meet him, I can help you get in touch. However, that would be helpful. the weather in that area has been quite unpredictable as of late. The train to Snowcrest is often unavailable. I suggest visiting him in two weeks. I don't have the time. Alright, I'll think about it. I try my best to sound nonchalant, but I already made up my mind. We're going anyways. So you're already in the Arctic? Did anyone go with you? No, we are strong and independent. It's <laughs> my new catchphrase. Don't worry, I'm just going to relax at Snowcrest. I'll be back in a few days. Liar. Oh, that's good. If you kept working so much, they'd need to install an anti-workaholic mechanism in the watch. Have fun on your vacation. Thanks. Yeah, I'll get some souvenirs for you. I end the call with Tara. Outside, the blizzard had stopped. Has stopped. The sky appears more vivid than in other places. The, the dazzling blue ho hues cascade past the snow-capped mountains. Ladies and gentlemen, we regret to inform you that the next train to Snowcrest has been cancelled. We apologize for the inconvenience. We're currently in the middle of Travis travel season. After hearing the announcement, the people on the platform drag their luggage back into to the waiting room and grumble. After getting Dr. Noah's contact info from Zane yesterday, I immediately schedule a meeting for today. Watching the time tick away on my phone, I approach the counter, unwilling to give up on my journey. Excuse me, are there other ways to get to Snowcrest besides taking the Boris Express? We still don't know if the train has been cancelled because of the weather or for another reason. For your safety, please wait. One cheesecake and one croissant, please. Thank you. Zane? A familiar voice reaches my ears. Surprised, I turn around and spot Zane at a cafe nearby. Zane? <laughs> His fingers pause over the glass display. Zane looks at me, but he doesn't seem surprised. It's you. It is. The love of your life? Yes. I immediately regret calling out to him. I try to suppress my guilt and wave to him. I pretend it's just a normal day. Haha! <laughs> why, why are you here? <laughs> what could you be doing here? Wow! Coincidence! There's been a new development in Dr. Noah's research. He asked me to visit him a week ago. After answering my poor excuse of a question, Zane's gaze shifts back to the freshly baked bread on the counter. He's not as young as he used to be and can't always do things alone anymore. I help him whenever I'm not too busy with work. Would you like to eat something together? Yes. Thanks. I'll get a sandwich then. Sir, the two lattes you ordered are ready. Here are to go. Ah, oh, he's efficient. Already has our latte ready to go. Zane is about to play, uh, pay, but I beat him to it. It's on me. Since we're both stuck at the station, why don't we keep each other... I notice the two lattes on the counter and suddenly freeze. There's something off. Why'd you get two lattes? Put two and two together. He makes a soft hmm and takes one of the lattes from me. The hot steam shrouds the smile on his face. Hmm. Did I say we met by chance? <laughs> oh, he has been giggling! <laughs> There's only one flight from Lincoln City to the Arctic. It departs in the morning and arrives at the in the evening local time once a day. Snowcrest, where Dr. Noah is isn't that far from 
this train station, but because of how underdeveloped the transportation system is in this vast, sparsely populated region, we can only take this particular train to go there. The display screen hanging overhead shows rows and rows of red delay notices. The number of people in the waiting room decreases. As we wait, my, my mind recalls the files Grandma left me. There must be secrets behind it that are connected to me. Maybe it can also explain that explosion. What are you thinking about? Things. Stuff and things. Things and stuff. You. Our marriage. Our wedding. Zane's voice interrupts my drifting thoughts. I force a smile. I'm thinking about what an I I'm going to call it an Athercore. I actually don't know if that's what it's called. I'm thinking about what an Athercore is and why it was fused with my heart. What if I'm a dangerous experiment that's escaped from a secret lab? Maybe armed men in suits will suddenly appear to take me away for in a few seconds. Actually, she doesn't have parents, does she? She's grown grown, right? No, maybe her parents died 14 years ago? I don't know. Zane listens to my wild thoughts without interrupting me. Well, a few seconds have passed, and nothing happened. Maybe you'll get your answers when we arrive in Snowcrest. Maybe. Zane gently comforts me, as if sensing my fear. The protocore energy in your heart has always been stable. It can form an invisible shield to protect your heart when you're attacked. You also oh. haven't become as weak as other patients with protocore syndrome. In other words, it's a power made just for you. MC privileges. It was made just for me? You won't have to worry about it anytime soon. You'll live for a long time. Long enough to find out the truth. How does he know this? Zane? I put my hand over my chest, trying to feel anything weird within my heartbeat. Would the person who put the Athercore in my heart want it back one day? Ladies and gentlemen, we regret to inform you that the train to Snowcrest will be delayed until 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. We apologize for the inconvenience. Really? It'll be that long? I'm not surprised. We'll have to spend the night in a hotel near the station. One bed trope, let's go. <laughs> a group of fully geared hunters rush past us. The evil rail guns in their hands are glowing blue. They're clearly charged. To be armed and... Is the delay caused by Wanderers? Let's get going. Heard Wanderers showed up in the dispatch center. What does that sound like, Caleb? <laughs> Caleb? That sucks. I wanted to see the Aurora in Snowcrest. They pick up their luggage and follow the very apologetic staff to a nearby hotel. I stay on the bench. Zane waits to get up, but stops. Oh, Zane wants to get up, but stops after glancing at me. Are we not leaving? No. Those hunters are on a mission. They must have a way to get wherever they need to go, no matter how bad the weather is. An idea pops into my mind. I grab Zane by the arm and chase after them. Let's help out. You know what, if people really want to, I can go through and do battles, but I'm pretty sure everyone's pretty chill. Thanks a bunch. The dispatch center was quite crowded. Lincoln hunters like yourself have more experience in evacuating people and preparing for battle. Don't mention it. We all learn from one another. The magnetic field here is unique. Wanderers usually hang around the snowfield and mountains. They only started appearing in crowded places recently. It's probably because... Uh... <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> he smiles and trails off. That information is probably classified. Oh. Judging from the scale of the damage at the dispatch center, no trains will be leaving from today onward. You guys are headed for Snowcrest, right? If you'd like, we can lend you a transport vehicle. It'll be bumpy, but it can traverse the snowy terrain. That, you would be doing us a solid, thank you. You have my gratitude. It's parked right outside the train station. Come with me. What 
a nice dude. What a nice fellow. It starts to snow outside. Zane and I stand in the freezing wind. A majestic four dog sleigh is in front of us. The dogs are all handsome and have thick fur. Their height is around half an average person's. Whoa, they're massive. What do you think? It's a specialty here. Treat it like a tourist experience. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's up to you now. My team is leaving. See ya. Thanks. Another cold gust blows past us. I look at Zane quietly and smile sheepishly. sheepishly. We won't be able to make it to the snow to Snowcrest tonight. Maybe we should just find a hotel nearby. Zane hops onto the sleigh and grabs the reins effortless, effortlessly with gloved hands. Get on. If you insist. So you know how to drive? I mean, ride it? Not all of my trips were accompanied by medical staff. I've ridden these sleighs a few times. But those are actual dogs. No, they're not. Fully upgraded. Please select one of the following to start your adventure. Sightseeing. Full speed ahead. Children friendly. Let's do children friendly. <laughs> it, it, it can talk. I stumble as I board the sleigh and almost fall onto the snow. Zane grabs my arm just in time. In the howling wind, Zane glances at me through his goggles. He has goggles on? His voice, muffled by his scarf, carries a hint of mirth. Shall we get going? Yes. Please drive safely. Now we know how he felt with us driving the motorbike, I guess. After passing through the vast snowfields, the terrain becomes even more mountainous. At the end of the horizon, the snow crest is shrouded in dusk. The sleigh dogs start their journey back immediately. I rub my slightly windburnt face and talk and walk to Zane. Judging from how well you steered, you're definitely not someone who helps out a few times a year. You're like a local. What did Dr. Noah say? Should we go directly to him or He said he's busy at the moment and can't pick us up in person. But Uh <laughs> it's his little dog. Right, yes. Zane pauses. Curious, I meet his gaze. He's arranged our pickup ride. Yeah. A snow white silhouette suddenly appears between us. <laughs> what is that? I almost forgot how clingy he is. <laughs> oh, this dog's smart too, I forgot. In response, the white creature leaps out from the flower bed and lands on Zane's luggage. Only now do I see it's a little white fox. Oh, it's a fox. Zane closes his eyes as if hit by a migraine. <laughs> when he opens his eyes, his expression returns to normal. You've gained weight, Pi. <laughs> Pi! <laughs> oh, Pi. I love you, Pi. I will protect you with my life, Pi. You two know each other? He is Dr. Noah's pickup ride. Pie. Pie. The fox ignores Zane, but paws at the canned pet food Zane had brought with him from LinkedIn. He came prepared, that's cute. In this cold, soulless world where advanced technology reigns supreme, it's surprising to see glossiness creatures like you. Here, eat as much as you want. I kneel down to pat the little fox's head. He turns to rub against me affectionately, affectionately before eating more food. He loves food, but not the person who bought it. <laughs> Don't be salty now. Did Dr. Noah name him Pie because his favorite dessert is white pie? When Dr. Noah adopted him, he ate six pies in one go. <laughs> oh, Pie, I love you. I can't help but chuckle. Zane lifts up Pie's right leg to check something. 
There's a little thing strapped to it. What is that? A tag. Tag for what? For a vaccination? I suddenly feel like Pi isn't simply Dr. Noah's pet. Zane has always kept a tight lid on his polar related research. He calls it a vacation or a visit to his teacher. What has he and Dr. Noah been researching and why does it have to do and why does it have to be done in such a cold place? As I watch Zane brush the crumbs off Pi's whiskers, my curiosity grows. Pi is very special. He's as intelligent as a nine-year-old child. And we love Pi. Don't be fooled by his cute, innocent appearance. I'm fooled. I am fooled. Easily. With a poker face, Zane blocks Pi's attempt to pick up another can and taps the fox's head. You only get one can of snacks per day. Go on now. Pi leads us swiftly through the streets. It takes a while, but we finally arrive at a place where Dr. Noah lives. Before we can enter the front yard, we hear the sound of some creature whining and struggling. There, there. The pain is gone now. Did he just kill something? What is happening? Little animals run around, staring up snow and dirt. The old man, wearing a large coat, com comforts the polar mink in his arm. The hell is a polar mink? Zane, what are you waiting for? Help me. <sighs> One second. <laughs> He's so tired. He's so tired of this. <laughs> huh? There's a hint of metaflux in the air. Is it from the mink? Before I can ask, Zane Trump traps a bunch of black furballs scurrying about the yard with his ice cage he creates. Are there other escapees? Maybe. No. <sighs> I messed up my yard again. <laughs> Zane catches another few animals in the same way and puts them back in their cages. Does the antagonist no longer work? Its effectiveness was shortened by a week. It seems the metaflux around this area is increasing again. Oh, hello. Long time no see. I do not remember you. Dr. Noah dusts the snow off his knees, gets up and walks over with a wide smile on his face. Come on in. It'll be warmer inside. Thank you. How's the fish? It's not much, but I caught it myself. Fish? Raphael? Where is he? <laughs> Show him to me. This is the first time I've eaten a very sweet fish. It has a unique flavor. Dr. Noah is very old, so his taste buds don't work anymore. After dinner, we sit in front of the fireplace together. Having eaten his fill, Pi sleeps between me and Zane. Dr. Noah puts on his spectacles and studies the files I brought. Hmm. So your grandmother told you everything? Well, not really. She more alluded to things and left a creepy, eerie note with many explanation marks. All she left me was this box of files. The rest I can only speculate. Is the protocol in my heart really an aether core? And was it placed there on purpose? I don't know why or how the process was done, but in regards to the protocol, even a minimally invasive surgery can leave behind traces. Dr. Noah looks up at me with expectant eyes. If I had to guess, it might be your innate strength. How can that? There are countless, seemingly impossible hypotheses behind every scientific conclusion. Before the Evol gene emerged, no one believed they could wield the power of nature. But all experiments have a purpose. What could the Aether Core in my heart possibly prove? What were they trying to prove? Yes. 
The old man laughs dryly and shakes his head. <laughs> Why do you think people want to go inside the deep space tunnel? I don't know. I don't even know what's in there. See, and I said I was going to pay attention to the lore this time, but I can't remember what's in the deep space tunnel. All I know is that Caleb flies in there. Some things are attractive by simply existing. Unraveling the unknown is a purpose in and of itself. Okay, so no one knows what's in there. Some are willing to do anything to achieve their goals. So, don't let anyone know about your ether core. Ether! This is awkward, I've been saying, I okay, ether. Orkies. Well, I haven't told everyone, Grandma is... I try to suppress the pain in my heart and compose myself. The person responsible for this will find me sooner or later. That's why I need to know what makes the ether core so special. You say that there are people willing to do anything to achieve their goals. Who exactly? Ether was originally something philosophers came up with. The fifth element, so to speak. No one can prove or disprove ether exists. Maybe that's the reason your grandmother called it ether. A mysterious energy that surpasses the other protocors. Anyone who knows about it will desire it. And anyone who has it will pay the price? The ether core is at the center of an intricate web. What happened to my family is just one thread of it. As if sensing my thoughts, Dr. Noah gently pats me on the shoulder. Don't worry about it too much. They shouldn't be able to find you anytime soon. I'm kind of worried. Not about me, maybe, but maybe everyone that I love, since last time it didn't end up too well. The amount of energy in your heart right now is far less than what the experimental data shows. It's possible an accident occurred in the final experiment, which reduced the Aether Core's power. He just called it Aether. Aether? We're switching up. You can't be switching up on me. Reduce the power? I'm just guessing. This is beyond my field of expertise. Then why did we come here? Who else knows about the experiments? <sighs> to better understand your heart's condition, I tried to contact those researchers privately. But most had either died or disappeared. It'd be hard to find any of them today. Uh, I do recall your grandmother mentioning one had run away to uh, N109 zone. They joined on a kindness. <sighs> Silas, it's all leading to Silas. This is suspicious. What's bro been doing? On a kindness? I didn't expect to hear that name from him, but after giving it some thought, it makes sense. Their fellow researchers started dying or disappearing soon after that. I only knew grandma used to do scientific research, but she never mentioned what she researched. Our home also didn't have any hints about her past. Dr. Noah, I have one last question about Grandma. Was she the person who put the Aether Core in my heart? Aether Core? Huh. I don't know. I know very little about your grandmother. But not everyone is lucky enough to do what's right in the beginning. We can only hope we'd have the chance to turn it into something we won't regret. So Grandma turned us into an experiment. That's thrilling. Dr. Noah puts all the files back into the box and hands it to me. Maybe this is the choice she made. Because she felt guilty about it? She was like, mm, I'm just going to die and then drop a bomb on her. Maybe I'm just a hater. In the stillness of the night, all is quiet except for the muffled crackling of the fireplace. Occasionally, a few sparks pop out from the flames, making a crisp sound. After tossing and turning in my bed, I decide to sit in front of the fireplace and go through the files left by Grandma. The ether core. Energy incompatible to other protocols. Oh, incomparable to other protocols. 
Grandma knew something might target people related to ether cores. Is that why she kept me in the dark for so long? What should I do now? While my mind is ta in a tangled mess, I hear a rhythmic tapping from the French windows. As I turn, I see Zane standing there with a thin layer of snow on his hair. <laughs> Will there really be one tonight? The weather forecast predicted heavy snowfall with cloudy skies, and the KP index is low. It's unlikely we'll see an aurora. Then why did you... When visiting for the first time, an aurora is required to make the trip worthwhile. <sighs> He's so soft! I think it hits harder when they're like, low-key cold all the time and then they're just soft to you. Look, the snow has stopped. Looks Only like it's the very still falling end, to me. Will someone know if there is a watershed moment? Until the very end. Yet, Grandma and those researchers, they... But there are people who persist until the very end, only to be defeated. I meant the Aurora. <laughs> Same. Same, I wasn't trying to get all like deep there. <laughs> What's that over there? Mount Eternal. Oh. I remember. It had he looks an like trauma. proto field a few years back. Dr. He Noah chose to live here in the Arctic. For your research project, right? Not necessarily. My friend sacrificed himself during the protofield anomaly that took place here. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? I don't Is like there this. More to his sacrifice? Like yeah. a secret? It was an accident. It's already in the past. Why does it feel like he's blaming us? Ah, I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it, actually. Hmm. Do you think the pain caused by death can truly be forgotten with time? It cannot. I don't like this. It's so angsty. <laughs> he knows something about our past. I don't know. Time can't heal everything, nor can someone simply forget the pain. However, people can become accustomed to sorrow. This is horrendous. But time has helped you and Dr. Noah find things worth living for, hasn't it? The Aurora. Dodged the question. You're right. An Aurora is required to make an Arctic trip worthwhile. It's a shame we can only enjoy it for a few moments. If you're sad, let this stay behind to appreciate the aurora in your face. So cute! Is that snowman supposed to be me? Are you going to stay in Snowcrest for a while longer? Well, I'll leave this with you then. Will the snowman no. remind you of me? I want the snowman. No. Oh. However, when I do think of you, I'll just call. To give me more doctor's orders? You're a very dedicated physician. After you leave here and return home, you'll likely be quite busy. Yeah. I'll be learning about the secrets of the Ether Core and Anakinus. Let's hope that both of us can find the truth we seek. To see the Aurora, Aurora is actually on my bucket list. Also, as if she got given that cute little snowman and then she gave it back. He made it for you. That's crazy handing that back. 
He can just make his own little snowman anytime he wants. Why would you hand that back to him? I will keep it. I'm going back to sleep. Good night. Good night. I bid farewell to Zane once we return to the living room. The Aurora might have actually put me at ease. A wave of tiredness overwhelms me. Wait. Kiss goodnight. <laughs> he picks up the documents scattered on the sofa. Then he quickly organizes them and hands them to me. Here. Thank you. These documents contain information about the energy in your heart and its connection to the ether core. If they're leaked, you might become Onakinus's next target. I think it's a little late for that, but thank you for mansplaining that. <laughs> I know. But why would they kill researchers who worked with an ether core? They want to keep its existence a secret? Perhaps they don't want anyone else to get their hands on it, as they try to obtain one for themselves. Or there are ether cores already in their possession, and they're currently trying to keep it secret. Hmm. I pause for a moment and then grab documents from Zane's hand. What is it? You said there could be an e you said there could be ether cores in Onika Innes's possession, right? I quickly flip through the documents, an idea forms in my mind. I was only speculating. You just gave me a clue, apparently. A light bulb moment. No, you might be onto something. Found it. Energy rest 3021.7 EV. It's my heart rate's minimum energy output value that corresponds to the ground state of the ether core. It dawns on me. I lift my arm to use the hunter's watch to look through the database. On that protocol I found in the no hunt zone. I'm not reading that again. The protocol the, the protocol and the energy value in its ground state is close to the energy value of the ether core in my heart. Meanwhile, the energy value for ordinary protocol is around 200 Duh, 2,500 EV. This can't be a coincidence. That protocol is a result of Onokinus using an ether core to modify it. As Dr. Noah said, the ether cores, could it really be on a, in Onokinus' hands? A cheerful cry snaps me back to reality. Fire circles around me twice. Curiosity pours at the and curiously pours at the luggage at my feet. It took a lot of effort to get here. Why not stay for a few more days? I'm a busy gal, I've got places to be, bitches to see. <laughs> Thank you, but I want to go back home and double check something. When I have time, I'll visit again. Then I'll stay until you beg me to leave. <laughs> Great. I'll hold you to it. I called a friend. He'll take you to the train station in a bit. Pie? Is Pie taking us? Ooh. Pie. The get-up's nice. Zane walks out of the house carrying his belongings and beckons Pi to his side. All set? Mm-hmm. It's freezing. Please go back inside. Pi will be my guide. Zane exchanges a few words in a low voice with Dr. Noah and then walks over to me. I don't like secrets. Stay safe. You really aren't coming with me? What? Did you think I was joking when I said I was here on business? No, not really. I shift my gaze, the distant snowy mountains in a deep slumber. For some reason, hearing that Zane uh, plans to venture deep into Mount Eternal reminds me of what he mentioned last night and I still feel uneasy. You take care of yourself, and Pi. I will. Pi barks twice at the entrance, and Zane nods to Dr. Noah before turning around and leaving. Oh my god, my camera's gonna go flat. Whew. 
At d uh, day as daybreak arrives, everything else is still sleeping. His figure dissipates, uh, disappears step by step as he heads towards the wintry mountain. In boundless white, he stands out like a lone stroke of black paint on a blank canvas, adding a touch of depth to its beauty. Adding a touch of depth and beauty to pure scenery. I blink and notice my vision has become slightly blurry. I rub my eyes and see a t and see tiny snowflakes. It's snowing again. That felt angsty. Okay, well that entire thing felt very angsty. I didn't enjoy that, to be honest. Um, I feel like Bro has the saddest backstory. Anyway, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Um, and thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, goodbye. I love you, I love you, I love you.